The day couldn't have been going better. I was hosted at the Spectacular Classic Club, former host of the Bob Hope Classic on the PGA Tour. I'd been playing some of my best golf when suddenly... <laughs> my driver carried 90 yards. But that's golf. And all I'm thinking about now is the shot at hand. Thanks. A very long approach on this very short hole. But I managed to get it green high, and now it's time to go to work. I have a stock bump and run when I don't need to get the ball airborne. This one's close, and will escape the first hole with a par. And what I want to enforce today is that breaking 80 doesn't always look pretty. Thanks. It's going to be long, because I took a lot of club. A rule of thumb I have is that I always take extra club on my first iron swing of the day. Here it leaves me well past the hole. Hmm. And my first lag putt it wasn't as fast as it appeared. Leaves me with work. But one thing I need to do to break 80 is make most of the makeable putts. Thanks. Even if the driver's failing. Like here, where I push this one up the right. No, I'm worried. And it finds the drink. Yeah. It's a shame hit that one well. But like I said, it's back to the shot at hand. In this swing, is much better than the last. It's difficult to see on video, because if you're one foot past that pin, you're going down 15 foot ridge. I'm tentative with this putt, and just like my first lag putt of the day, it leaves me with a bit of work to do. Yeah. I'll put a firm stroke on this four footer, and I don't get it to go. Keep it on the left. Finally, we found a good drive. Thanks. It's just 220 in now, but this was not a good strike. That was a mile short. I don't have the option of keeping this one low, and I fly it past the hole. But even though this isn't the birdie putt I wanted, I take my time to walk the putt, and I commit to a line. And for the first time, Stop. I've gotten a lag putt to the hole. Thanks. Passed it, in fact. And I'll tidy up for par. Back to this. Yeah. 250 down the middle, like I said, right? And this. Oh, Adam. And admittedly, I might not be in the best frame of mind here. I do not have this shot in my arsenal. That's the best I have with my skill set. I just don't know how to do that high and soft. And I'm left with yet another long, long lag putt. And this one, I definitely don't leave short. Boy. But the scorecard doesn't discriminate based on what you're putting for. There we go, the comebacker. We're fortunate to escape with only a bogey there, and we're straight onto the toughest par three on the golf course. Yeah. We're putting from the fringe here, and after missing the first two lag putts of the day short. Boy, another one hammered. I'm struggling a bit to find equilibrium, but making the comebacker Thanks. helps keep the momentum going. We're getting close to putting the driver on timeout after this one, where I'm left with a long way home. And with water up the left, I'm playing far away from the trouble here. That might've been too conservative. And this is my lead. It's another little bump and run, honed during my childhood playing pitch and putt. On video, flat putt. <laughs> and this is actually the toughest pin placement we've seen yet. I know it all looks the same on video, but this pin was right on a spine, and I'm okay with a two putt. The driver has been so bad that I decided to take out the five wood here, and I'm lucky to perfectly shape one for this hole. And I'm left with a short uphill approach. I'm gonna take one sec here. Another tricky putt, and I'm trying to get my read. It's got a bit of this in it, but I don't think much. You see it the other way? Yeah, I see this slope here, but at the hole, I see it doing that. I'm playing it like a cup right, but pace matters so much more here than anything. And with so many cooks in the kitchen, I might have suffered from some indecision on this one. And the end result is a putt that slips past the hole. Whoa. The best of times and the worst of times with the flat stick. But we do manage to make the par putt. Okay, lining up closed didn't work. Now we'll try something else. On course is really not the time to experiment with new swings, and you'll see my reaction. Nowhere near where I wanted to put it. I was aiming left of the <laughs> small trees. I think I'm just hitting six iron, right? And then 100 in. But now we're back to playing smart golf. It's 200 to the water, and I'm laying up to a number. Maybe not the number I wanted, but the one I got. We call that the son-in-law shot, followed by a pin seeker. Oh yeah. Good shot. Thanks. It's just a tap in birdie now. Hey. The driver was an atrocity on the front nine, but I hit some greens, scrambled a couple of times, and closed with the birdie. And I averaged one bad shot per hole on the front nine, which honestly isn't all that uncommon. What I'm trying to make more common is a healthier routine on and off the course. And with that, a word from today's sponsor. 
Do you have a perfect diet day in and day out? I don't. I'm actually a hot dog at the turn kind of guy. But Ritual helps me fill in the gaps in my diet without additives, fillers, or colorants. Just easy to take capsules that provide 10 nutrients that support a strong foundation for my health. And that's because Ritual is an obsessively researched and transparently made multivitamin. It's never too late to start a new Ritual and incorporate a healthy habit in your routine too. I've also started taking Ritual Symbiotic, a three-in-one prebiotic, probiotic, and postbiotic that helps support gut, digestive, and immune health. Each capsule is designed with delayed release technology, so it's easy to take on an empty stomach, and I take it first thing every day. With my monthly subscription, I get the high quality nutrients I need with Ritual delivered right to my doorstep. You can also fill in the gaps in your diet with essentials for men and products for different life stages so you can start a healthy habit that lasts. To get 20% off your first month with Ritual, go to ritual.com slash scratch golfer and use the code scratch at checkout. On to the back nine, where this drive is better than they have been so far. Yeah, much better. But I'm still outside the 150 marker here. Might get away with it. Kick it right. Kick it right. No. I'm left with a good 50 feet from off the green here, and too often I watch amateurs step over the ball and hit these. But by walking the putt, I subconsciously program in my distance control here. And it's worth pointing out that the difference between lagging this one close and leaving it outside of makeable range is often a full stroke on the card. And a full stroke is worth taking an extra few seconds on. You'll see that it doesn't hold up my group whatsoever, and I'm able to make the par. This hole is playing about the same yardage as the eighth nice. hole, and once again I opt for the five wood. It leaves me in good position, but I catch this one thin. Go! Stay! Back to my bump and run shot, but this one is misjudged and goes long. Whoa! It's about 12 feet for par here, and I saw it going in. But it's not meant to be, and I'll settle for bogey. <sighs> on to one of many holes on the back nine that could be a candidate for the signature hole on the course. I take extra club, but I'm not pleased with the contact. <laughs> Although the drone shot here shows you that it does get to pin high. That was such a poor strike. <laughs> and now we have another downhiller from just off the green. Well, that was a little wussy. It's left short, and I mentioned that it's important to make most of the makeable ones today. But I don't get this one to go, and for the first time today, we card back-to-back -to -back bogeys. And after this one, the driver is on detention for the rest of the round, and my partner's given me a target here. How about a bit right of it? <laughs> but I'm offline and short. And this bunker shock goes long. That's one way to get out of there. Thanks. I'm staring down my first double bogey since the third hole, and this one's coming in with a lot of pace. Hey! <laughs> Thanks. A good five, all things considered, there. And like I said, it's five wood from here on out. Uh-oh. This one struck well, but unfortunately winds up in a bunker. I'll just play this as a three-shotter now, and it starts with taking a conservative club that I'm able to hit cleanly out of the bunker. It's just a short iron in from here, and this one's offline, but bang on the number, and I'll have about 25 feet uphill for birdie. It's a rare instance when I can be aggressive. It's left a bit short, but I'm happy to get off the bogey train. Nice. Hard work and par on that hole. Oh, sit. An advantage of the five wood on this short par four is that it actually takes some of the trouble out of play, and I'll have just a gap wedge in. That's not good. And like the last hole, the direction is off, but the number is fine, which stresses the importance of missing pin high when possible. And that one actually had a chance of dropping for birdie. It doesn't quite go, but I'll tap in for a routine par. Another five wood, and this time it struck well, and no drama. Thanks. I decide to grab an extra club on the approach here, and despite a poor strike, it leaps up and actually misses just long of the green. Stop. Right over the back. I took too much club, yeah. And if it wasn't clear by now, this is one of the key reasons I was able to keep the score in check today. You can get away with a whole lot of poor play tee to green if you're tidy greenside. Thanks. And here I walk away with a par. Yeah, I feel the wind. With a bit of wind into here, I'm taking the hardest rip I can with the 7-iron. That's all 80 miles an hour of swing speed for those keeping track. Yeah. And I give myself a look at birdie. It doesn't quite go, oh. but I'm happy okay. with the par. We'll take one final look at the spectacular closing hole here at Classic Club, where once again, I'm just hitting a 5-foot. And this one's hit well. Sit. I'm hoping it doesn't reach a bunker. I don't know. I never saw it. I think just hybrid. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I'm in luck. Now it's just a hybrid to where I'll have gap wedge in. Despite the fistfuls of poorly struck shots today, 
I'm primed to escape with a sub-80 score, which is one I'll take every day. I hope it's helpful for those of you staring down scoring goals to know that you don't need to peer every shot to get there. Thought that was good. It's just a matter of treating each shot independent of what came before it. The ball striking today wasn't there for me, but I still managed to hit a fair share of greens, get up and down a handful of times, and avoid three-putting. There's nothing that makes me happier than comments celebrating these milestones. There's room for swing improvement, and everybody goes about it their own way. Yes, sir. Is that a bird? That's how you clean up that day. But with all the ways to enjoy this game, I hope you're able to find yours.